Hi, this is Regeline Sabah, also known as Gigi. You're listening to Walk With Me Podcast. My guests today are Bill York and Josh Cretion. And today we are going to discuss mental health. Welcome to the show, Bill and Josh. Nice. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. It's an honor to have you guys here today. Now, I need both of you to introduce yourselves. Let's start off with Josh. Please introduce yourself. Yeah, so my name is Josh Cretion. Um, and in relation to what we're talking about today, I helped to co uh, co-start a um, mental health nonprofit called Josh York Legacy Foundation alongside um, William. Um, and we talked about mental health and our mission is to educate people on mental health to allow them to take care of themselves because as we were talking earlier, the mental our, our mentality is if we can teach you how to put a condom on, we can teach you how to take care of your mental health. And we'll talk a bit about that later. But yeah. I love it. Thank you. Bill? Yeah, I'm Bill York, uh, retired Air Force. Um, uh, we started this foundation after we lost my son to suicide. And we just realized that the uh, there wasn't enough uh, resources that were available at the grassroots level. Um, you know, there are resources out there, but you know, the prevention side of it is really on a personal level. And so we decided to uh, not give in to the grief that comes with it and, and do something positive at it. So that's what we've been doing for the last two and a half years. Very powerful. I love it. Now, tell us more about what inspired both of you to become advocates for mental health. Let's start off with Bill. So, uh, you know, I'd, like I said, spent 30 years in the Air Force, uh, enlisted officer, commander, so I, I had literally had many, many years of, uh, of annual training. I was a uh, criminal investigator for about six years and investigated suicide and documented it and did uh, command inquiries about it for families to get their insurance. So I've had a lot of exposure to it from that side of it. And when it hit my family when with the loss of my 20-year-old son, Joshua, um, you know, it just uh, it changed me. It changed me from this person who... Uh, couldn't be stopped anymore because it just it's too important of an issue i don't want anybody any other families to experience what we experienced as a family and and uh, josh is part of our family he was uh is my son's partner um before his passing so thank you for sharing that with us bill josh can you tell us more about what inspired you to become an advocate for mental health yeah so without getting too much into the details behind it um I was actually Josh's first responder um, on the day that he took his life. And so knowing what that's like to go through and losing someone, I mean, I struggle myself with uh, PTSD from the Marine Corps, um, from some stuff that I saw and experienced while I was in. And it's one of those things where none of that even compares, not even on like the smallest fraction to what it's like to lose one of your own loved ones. Um, and especially when you're the one that has to attempt to save their life. And so my thing is to do everything that I can to make sure that nobody else ever has to go through that um, on the responder side, but then also on the person going through it side um, to make sure that there are ways to talk about what's going on in your life and ways to open up about issues that you may be having. Because to be honest, I mean, the day that it happened, we literally had just gotten back from spending the day out on our boat. So our life was good. Like I had no idea that anything was going on. Nobody did. Um, and so it's one of those things where clearly there was a disconnect of comfort or the ability to be vulnerable. And so creating a safe space, like we have um, primarily built with um, the Suicide Prevention Rocks group is like, creating a safe space so that people can talk about things like that and feel safe doing so and allow them to be vulnerable. And so that's, that's why I do what I do. Very powerful. Now tell us more about the Josh York foundation. You want to go with that, Josh? Go for it. <laughs> so, so, uh, we started, uh, about a month after, uh, our son's passing and, and, it started from a conversation with my wife. She said, wanted to create, like most people do, some kind of lasting memory. Um, she brought up uh, scholarships at his high school. So we talked about that. My history is a CPA. So, you know, I know all the rules about it. And I was asking questions like, you know, well, do you want us to pay for it? Do you want us to 
do you want it to be uh, an annual thing? Um, you know, do you want it to be everlasting or and or when we pass, does it end kind of thing? And, you know, of course, the obvious response to that usually is, well, I'd like it to be self-sustaining. In order to do that, you have to create some type of uh, organization for that or pass money to the state. There's organizations within every state that can manage funds for you. But we decided to create our own foundation. We named it after him. And the three of us, um, you know, incidentally, after Josh passed, uh, Josh Cresha moved in with us for what, a month and a half, two months, Josh. And, and you know, we supported each other as a family. And so we had these conversations individually uh, as a group. And we decided that, um, you know, let's let's see if we can make a difference. And, and it was it. It's been an amazing journey. We in the first year we raised fifty thousand uh, dollars, just under it. We were able to bring a uh, motivational speaker to three high schools in the area. Uh, about three months after they each, uh, two of them of the high schools had suicides on bookends of the first week, Veterans Day, and the Friday after Veterans Day. So it was devastating to our community in the schools. So we decided to do something about it, and we have had. I would. I can only describe it as divine intervention because um, we're just open to things. So uh, Josh has created uh, a project called the Angel Project where folks can upload a bio and a picture uh, of their lost loved one. And we have, we've talked about ha what we can do with that. Uh, I've, uh, my wife and I were trying to heal our youngest children so, and get them talking again. And so we started painting kindness rocks and they turned into suicide prevention rocks. And we created uh, a Facebook page called Suicide Prevention. And two and a half years later, we've got 35,000 plus members in every state in the U.S. and 99 foreign countries painting rocks and leaving them in their local community for folks to find. Um, it's just been an amazing journey. Very inspiring. Now, let's talk about sex education being covered, but not mental health in our education systems. I know you're a strong advocate for that. Can you explain to us more of the, that and why you raise awareness about it? Uh, Josh, you want to start with that one? Yeah. So for me, it's one of those things where, you know, I graduated high school in 2006. So it's one of those things where I remember as early as like eighth and ninth grade having classes where, you know, the teacher and, and I use these these statements kind of as a joke on a with intent. But like, you know, I remember ha sitting in class as an eighth grader. So like 12, 13 years old, I think, and watching the teacher at the front of the class take a banana and put a condom on it. And that was fine. But yet talking about our mental health or talking about issues that you're having with was like bad juju and like people just don't do it. And so like looking back at that kind of stuff now, it's like that that's ridiculous. Like I understand sexual health and like making sure that you're not um, you know, practicing unsafe sex and, and all that kind of stuff. I get that. But the numbers comparing, you know, people who die from having unsafe sex to the people who die from not knowing how to properly take care of their mental health. And it's the simple things, right? Like being fit, being active, physically fit, like having an active lifestyle, having friends that you can talk to, knowing how to kind of pull yourself out of those darknesses, yoga, uh, breathing techniques, all those kinds of things are stuff that you don't learn in high school. I'm a firm believer that the entire education system is broken and there's a lot of work to do there um, from like, you know, learning basic adult things, um, especially as an entrepreneur and, you know, all the things that you got to know how to run a business and like how to be successful in real life and do your taxes and accounting. And But to the tune of, or to the point of, of sexual health versus mental health, it's like mental health is it doesn't exist until you're, you know, in college or further and you get involved with some nonprofit like ours or something like that. But yet it's totally okay and acceptable and funded by the way, by the government to teach you how to put a condom on, which to me is totally backwards. So Bill. Yeah. So, uh, you know, after we lost Josh, I struggled being an, a, a CPA and, government accounting manager uh, had taken off six months and I actually took and had the opportunity to switch careers and become a high school teacher teaching ROTC. What I see uh, is, you know, we're in school, 
we definitely are teaching uh, uh, sexual education uh, from for me it was as early as I believe fourth grade and and then each you know two or three years later we would have a greater discussion more in depth for me of course I graduated in 1984 so I'm, I'm an old guy but I don't remember very much about health education you know uh, what I see in my counterparts today they do teach some health education but it's it's very cursory and they're starting to implement at least in my school and other city schools in Baltimore this mindfulness program they have yoga uh, a person who will do yoga with them um, but it's not nationalized it's not consistent and really what we need is to to, to have an in-depth conversation with children on one it's okay not to be okay you're going to go through highs and lows in life um, you're going to experience uh, death and uh, you know dysfunction and, and uh, health issues. And how do you deal with those? How, how do you make sure uh, that you can take care of yourself or those around you? What are the signs of suicide? What's the signs of depression? Who to reach out to? You know that it's okay to reach out. That nobody's going to shame you because at the for one moment in your life because you lost a grandparent you're going through depression and you have to be able to understand what those terms are and, and be retrospective of yourself. Now I've, I've got, Josh was just one of five of my children. And so I've got one older than him who's about 25 and three younger that are still in school. And we have uh, spent a lot of time um, with counselors as a family, as individuals, with uh, you know, having mental health discussions, especially in the aftermaths of our loss you know, how are you feeling? You know, trying to, in very gentle terms, get them talking about their feelings. And uh, I feel like we went through a window where, you know, there's a high risk for our family. Um, one reason is after my son passed, his older sister um, found out she was pregnant about a month later. And six months after we lost Josh, uh, my ex-wife, his biological mother, uh, out of grief took her life too. So we went through this process of losing a child, uh, going through and then losing an, uh, the mother of the child. And the, even though it wasn't my three children's mother or even stepmother, they still saw her. They still knew her. So it was this double trauma that impacted us all. And, um, and, and to be honest with you, she was a social worker, worked in a hospital, um, had done it all her life so she knew where the uh the help was but she didn't have the capacity for whatever reason probably maybe because of that uh stigma thing to seek the right help and and work through it very powerful now what are some of the other resources you recommend to help educate others regarding mental health so we we're constantly um, in search of, you know, people who are putting out there. And, and it's kind of amazing. You, you have the big ones. You have AFSP, you have NAMI, um, you have uh, the VA. You know, they have information out there. But what we find in the large government organizations is sometimes it's not personal or not as personal as it needs to be. And, and it can be, at least in the sense of the VA system, it can be hard to navigate. Um, they're overwhelmed anyway. Uh, you know, we lose 22 plus veterans a day, and that's only the ones registered in the VA system. There's another seven or eight a day not registered that we're losing. Also, yeah, you know, this is this is not just one population. You know, one it's not one race, one sex, one age, one population. This is a worldwide issue. You know, and when you're losing someone every 10 minutes within our country and then you extrapolate to the world you know we're talking in some states people there's someone taking their life every two to three minutes and, and there that's something wrong you know and we're not talking about it in the public we need we need everyone to be talking about it we need the news agencies we need people like yourself people like us we, everyone needs to be talking about mental health especially in the covid crisis Absolutely amazing. Now, are there any signs or red flags in regards to suicide prevention that you highly recommend individuals look out for? 
the 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 one that I would start with is changes in personality. You know, if someone's very outgoing and they shut down, you need to have conversation. If somebody's normally very conservative is and going hog wild, doing very reckless things, you need to have a, a conversation with them because any change in personality is a sign that something's going on. It may just be that they're maturing or they've just moved out of the house and started college for the first time or something like that. And those things are normal. But without that conversation, without connecting with the person, uh, you're not going to find that out. And that's one of the things we we say is, uh, you know, our, our motto is strengthening lives with love. But one of our, in fact, on the back of the shirt, it says it, it you know, uh, recognize, connect, and act. You have to first teach yourself so you can recognize signs. And there's a lot of them. Um, you can find those on AFSP, on NAMI sites, pretty much anywhere that if you just type up signs of suicide, you're going to get a list. And when you read that list, it's going to seem very normal. Oh, well, I wouldn't associate that. It's not any one thing on the list. It's the conglomeration of two, three, four, five, six of those items. But any of them should start the conversation. So once you can recognize them, you have to connect. And it's got to be on a personal basis because people have to feel safe sharing that information. You know, walking up to somebody and say, hey, you look sad. Are you thinking about hurting yourself? It's not going to work with most people. You, they, there has to be a personal connection. And sometimes that can take hours on the phone if you, know, if you come across somebody. I mean, we do it all the time. People will reach out to us in a state of uh, dysfunction or, or, or stress and, and talk to us. And, you know, it takes time to get them to a point where you can actually have that conversation. And then you have to be able to act. Some of that is acting to have the conversation. But if you're not getting through to the person or if, or if there's a high risk, if you think, if you're sitting in the back of your mind saying, oh, my God, this, I'm, I may not be able to save this person, then you got to act. You, you, you have to reach out and get someone over to wherever they're at uh, as fast as possible, police, medics. Get them there so that they can take control of the situation and get them the mental health they need. Recognize, connect, act. Very powerful. Thank you for sharing that. And now, of, go oh, ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, and one of the things to highlight what Bill was just saying is like, is as far as the action piece is, if you have like, if you have a connection to someone and you think that they might be considering just straight up ask, asking the question, are you thinking about hurting yourself? It's like, it's like a slap in the face, wake up like, oh shit, like, this person actually cares. They're actually asking me. And that has been shown to pull people away from that because it, it's a trigger of like, oh wow, like someone's actually interested in whether I live or die. So just straight up asking that question, are you thinking about hurting yourself? Um, Questions. Uh, Thank you. Now, can you tell us more about the Trevor Project? Oh, so this organization isn't necessarily tied to the Trevor Project, um, but what I was referring to earlier. So one of the goals of the organization is, and one of one of my primary goals is to introduce legislation um, in all 50 states that will allow us to legally require um, schools and districts to provide uh, mental health first aid training to both educators and students. And my background on that, that links to the Trevor Project that I was talking about is, you know, I in the past helped to start an organization. Um, I was the director of communication for an organization called 50 Bills 50 States, which was later absorbed by the Trevor Project. And the goal of that organization was and still is um, to eliminate gay conversion therapy in all 50 states. And they're still fighting that fight um, they've succeeded in, I want to say over 25 or 30 states. So it's one of those things where, although I haven't been involved with that organization for a couple of years now, um, I stepped out as the organization was absorbed by the Trevor Project because the Trevor Project saw how powerful the organization was and what it was doing and wanted to be a part. Um, so by going that route, it, it opened up budgets, it opened up opportunity. And so the organization was absorbed underneath the Trevor Project umbrella, but having that background and knowing the process at least a little bit to how that works and how legislation is written, how it's introduced into, you know, starting at like city Senate to state Senate kind of levels up to national. It's one of those things where I'm confident that 
with the right mix of people, we can make it possible. And I mean, especially in today's day and age, if I'm being honest, the political stance on mental health is heightened, which means it's that's going to help that fight um, because politicians are going to want to get behind it. So the goal of the organization in regards to that would be to make it a you know long, long goal, a federal mandate, but starting at the state level um, and potentially even smaller within school districts to force the or to request that these groups provide government funding in order to pro to provide the mental health first aid training but also to require it as as a, a yearly requirement for both educators and students because it's one of those things like i said and i say i'll say it again and again and again if we can teach you to put a condom on your willy we can teach you how to take care of your brain and your mental health now i would like to you know you asked about the trevor project and, and josh is way more familiar with it than i am but the one thing i do like about the trevor project uh, is that they are specific to the LGBT community and they have their own uh, help lines and text lines that are available. So what I would say to listeners, if you're in that community, you know, number one, I hope you're proud of who you are. And, and you know, it's, it's good mental health position to know yourself, be proud of yourself and, and to exist in that plane of happiness. And so what I would tell you, you know, please, if you're not there, work there find the people who are going to support you in your life. But if you find yourself in that position where you need someone to talk to, where you're thinking about hurting yourself, where, uh, you know, you are beyond what you can handle on any, at that particular moment, reach out to the Trevor project. They're there for you specifically the LGBTQ plus community and every person, I, I haven't met anybody on this earth that doesn't have something to, teach someone else and to share with someone else uh you know we are, we each and every one of us have something specific and unique about us sometimes we don't even know it so you know if you're if you're sitting out there wondering you know you know what am i doing here today you know nobody would miss me you're wrong reach out to somebody because there is something about you that that someone else needs i love it i appreciate both of you for being here today. Now, before we close out, are there any last words that you'd love to share with everyone? Uh, I'd just like to tell everybody real quick about our Facebook. Uh, it's called Suicide Prevention Rocks. Uh, it's I like to think of it as art therapy because we have so many people out there, one, that are good artists and, and their, their work is just beautiful. It makes you feel good. But the people who are begin painting, I've met so many people who've begun painting and they paint like I do, like a you know five-year-old and, and, you know, they are consistent enough that, you know, sometimes they have these magical things come out. Um, but it's, the whole program is based on, number one, a way to have the conversation around suicide, prevention and awareness, to bring it to local communities so that uh, people get involved, that, you know, a simple rock painted with words of hope can save somebody's life because it lets them know that somebody they never even knew left this rock for them to find. Rocks tend, you know, it seems like the rocks and the people find them, you know, who they're meant to be. And, and uh, lastly, we're in May, uh, either May 15th or May 22nd, if we get rained out on the 15th, at the end of Mental Health Month this year, we are going after a Guinness World Record for the largest display of painted rocks ever done in the world. Current record's 8,542 uh, painted rocks made in England. We want to uh, try to get at least 10,000. Our goal is to bring initially, uh, you know, attention to suicide prevention and, and awareness, and then take all those rocks, which we've had uh, being sent to us from all over the United States, even as far away as Pakistan and Australia and England, and then try to re, um, rehome those back to the place that they originated from through governors or embassy. So we want this to be the drop of water that we create that has waves and ripples for weeks and months to come. I love it. Now, Jessica says rocks definitely find their people. <laughs> they do. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. Now, Josh, are there any last words that you'd love to share? Yeah. I mean, my main thing would just be, like I said, it, I, I don't wish for anyone to have to go through what we went through. So it's one of those things of, you know, get involved, find a way to get involved. We've got a bunch of programs within our organization. There's a bunch of other nonprofit organizations that are fighting this fight. I don't care if they get involved with us or someone else, but just get involved, do something. 
Um, if you see someone that's struggling, like I said, it or like Bill said, it could be something as small as, you know, they're sleeping more throughout the day or they just don't have any interest in something they used to really be interested in. I mean, there's a bunch of different signs, but if you see someone that's exhibiting those signs, just ask the question, are you considering hurting yourself? Because you'd be surprised how much of a wake up call that that can be to somebody. Yeah. So that's very, very, thank you. And G Gigi, thank you for giving us the opportunity to, to jump on your show and, and to, uh, you know, provide some awareness and prevention, let people know about our organization and that there is most importantly, help out there in every state. Some places it's harder to find, but you know, if you're there, please look for it. If you can't find it, reach out to us. We'll help you find it. I love it. And you're both welcome. And I hope you have a blessed day. Thank you, you very too. much. Thank you so much. Judy.